to this week's Movie Math, giving you an in-depth analysis of the box office for the weekend of September 7th, where two of Hollywood's supposedly hottest new stars struck out at the box office. For Bradley Cooper, this was actually Strike Two, his hit and run debut just two weeks ago at number 10. But when your co-stars are Dax Shepard and Kristen Bell, that's not too surprising. However, The Words was a Sundance debut and features a more respectable, if B or C level, supporting cast, such as Zoe Saldana, Olivia Wilde, Dennis Quaid, and Jeremy Irons. Yes, at this point, Irons has sunk to B or C level. Hollywood is a cruel place where you're only as good as your last movie, which leaves one to wonder what Tinseltown is thinking about Bradley Cooper right now, as The Words only opened at number three with five million, despite a large release and some might say too much advertising. Cooper had better hope Jennifer Lawrence fans show up en masse for the Silver Linings Playbook this November, or that'll be strike three. So who's the other hot new star to fizzle this weekend? That would be Henry Cavill, but I bet you didn't even know he had a movie out this weekend. See, despite featuring the next Superman in an impressive supporting cast, some entertainment pretty much buried the film with no advertising and booking about a thousand theaters less than one would for a new action release. One has to wonder why the studio would do such a thing, because even with lousy reviews, audiences would be eager to see Cavill in only his second starring role on the big screen. Perhaps Warner Brothers made a call? Regardless, the pick opened at number 13 with just 1.8 million. Let's hope these kinds of headlines don't prove to be kryptonite to Cavill as he tries to successfully take on the mantle of Superman next year. As for the rest of the box office, it was pretty dismal. In fact, this weekend was the worst since immediately after 9-11, when, as one would assume, moviegoing was at an all-time low. But while Cooper and Cavill might make for easy scapegoats, hopefully Hollywood will realize the entire industry is in need of some soul-searching, as it was recently announced that so far, 2012 is lagging behind 2002 by 100 million tickets. Higher ticket prices, along with 3D and IMAX surcharges, have lessened the financial blow, but it's becoming clear that moviegoing is no longer people's number one choice for entertainment. So the question is, is that because television and video games are getting better, or because movies are getting worse? I personally feel it's a combination of the two, and as many of you know, as of late I've been spotlighting Hollywood's waning respect for the importance of screenwriting. Just last week over on my comic book channel, Think About the Ink, I blamed Hugh Jackman for X-Men Origins Wolverine. Some of you countered that as an actor, Jackman couldn't be blamed for how the film turned out. Yet I then countered that as a producer of the film, he certainly could, as he had the power to demand a script rewrite. Then, interestingly, one person argued that with a looming deadline, even as a producer, Jackman couldn't be expected to demand a rewrite that would hold up production. To me, that underlines a disturbing new trend of greenlighting the idea of a film before a script is even completed in order to secure a choice release date. Why rush to theaters if you're only going to deliver junk and ultimately hurt the very brand you're trying to strengthen? Fox shouldn't have greenlit X-Men Origins Wolverine until the script was in excellent shape. How many movie tickets is Hollywood going to have to hemorrhage before they realize that audiences are actually pretty smart? That's something television and video games have certainly figured out, and they're reaping the monetary rewards. What do you think? Why aren't people going to the movies as much as they used to? Is it competing entertainment, quality, or the simple answer of price? Be sure to share your thoughts down below. This coming weekend, the box office should rebound slightly as the fifth Resident Evil movie hits theaters and Nemo goes 3D. But let's end on a genuinely high note, shall we? The Dark Knight Rises has now crossed the one billion mark and surpassed The Dark Knight as the most successful entry in Nolan's trilogy. Everyone at Warner Brothers can breathe a sigh of relief now and maybe rethink that silly Wonder Woman TV show they're developing again. And that's the weekend box office. I'm Grace Randolph and we just did some movie math. As always, thanks for watching and I hope you'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.